خصوصا على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين وعلى اله واصحابه وازواجه وذرياته اجمعين اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الناس انا خلقناكم من ذكر وانثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وكبائل لتعارفوا ان اكرمكم عند الله اتقاكم وقال الله تعالى في مقام الاخر يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله ان الله خبير بما تعملون بارك الله لنا ولكم في القران العظيم ونفعنا واياكم بالايات والذكر الحكيم انه تعالى جواد كريم ملك بر الرؤوف الرحيم my respected elders sisters and brothers assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh for the last three days i was at a very interesting conference on the charter of the new alliance of values and this was a conference in which a very prominent scholar and a sufi sheikh abdullah ibn abiya madallahu zillahu has been actually working for a long time on this issue how do we promote peace in muslim societies and in muslim countries and we muslims sadly today are looked upon as you know a source of problem and uh and that is really something opposite to what islam is it is opposite to what we stand for our values are values of peace and the values of tolerance but it's no good saying i'm peaceful i'm peaceful until we get others to recognize that reality so sheikh bin biya has really done some fantastic work to show how muhammadur rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the prince of peace he was somebody who didn't just talk about peace but actually created peace he took steps to create peace and one of the greatest events in the life of the prophet before actually he declared his prophet it was the hilful fudul this was a an alliance which the prophet made with other people in mecca who were concerned about the iniquities and the injustices of the meccans the meccans were terrible at you know giving justice to the poor the needy the orphans and so there was huge you know disparity and injustice the gap between the rich and the poor was huge and so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam along with some other people made an alliance an ittihad a group okay that we will stand together all of us this is before declaring his prophethood and announcing his prophethood so you can imagine you know how rasulullah was a social activist are you with it yeah we muslims don't in you know, a lot of us are not bothered eh ke parwah ye jaan what's happening around us we don't care eh someone else will take care of it but muhammadur rasulullah say sunna is this if you're really a muhammadan you have to be a social activist you do have to be concerned about what's happening around you how can he not do that eh so he took these people in his confidence and he said we are going to do something about this we are going to help these poor people and we're going to stand up against the likes of abu jahal abu lahab abu sufyan we're going to stand up to them and we're going to teach them that they must be equal and fair and they must tolerate so this was a helpful for them and sheikh bin baya you know wanted to convince the people around him this is non muslims even the un to accept that this was a great charter of tolerance and he it, it, along with some other people have put together this charter 
of the new alliance of v values. And the idea of this conference was really to convince people, win people over, and get people to do, uh, sign it. So more than a thousand people from all over the world came. But what was really interesting was, at the end of the conference, there was a small ceremony in which three people were honored. Who were these three people? Well, one of them was the Imam of the Christ Church Mosque. He was somebody whose wife was killed in that awful massacre. Do you remember in New, in, 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 in New Zealand, in Church Christ? Um, that was last year. And he was injured himself. He was given the award because he said, you know, I forgive the, the murderer. And also, I also, you know, pray for him, for his guidance. So that was an amazing kind of, this is tolerance. So if you wanted to see what it is, this is what tolerance is. There was another old imam from a village in North Nigeria. What he had done was, when the Boko Haram terrorists attacked some of the Christian villages around his mosque, he actually gave refuge to more than 200 Christians in his masjid. And when these murderers came actually with their guns to kill them and, and, and they said, we want to get into the masjid and kill them, the Imam, his name was Ahmad Abu Bakr, he said, first kill me and then you will have access to them, but kill me first. And he, in that way, defended and saved the lives of more than 200 Christians. Okay? And for that, he was given this award. And finally, there was another uh, gentleman, a commander, actually, a, a commander of the Philippines Liberation, Liberation Movement. They've been fighting for 40 years for their own independence in Philippines. This is a Muslim guerrilla group. And it was really interesting that this commander came up and he said six months ago, we decided that enough is enough. And we have now joined forces and reconciled, made peace with our Philippines government, and we have now you know, given up our arms. And he too was given a, a, an award. So this is tolerance in reality. Are you with me, everybody? Do you see? Do you see? I mean, these are very moving. So these three people were given shields for their following the example of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa you know, the whole point is this, you know, one of the, our weakness as human beings is, you know, we just think about ourselves and if we're really good, we might think about our families, our children and our family. And if we are a bit better, we might think about people around us, those who do favors to us. Okay. And if we are better, we might think about our neighborhood or our city. But it really is very rare, you know, we become so self-centered and our deen is about taking us out of that bubble of our selfishness. Our, and this is what the Quran says, Ya yuhan nas, inna khalaqna kum min dhakarin wa unsa. Surah Al-Hujarat, Allah says, people, I made you from a man and a woman and made you into many different tribes and into different races so that you may recognize and so that you may know the value and the goodness of each other. Ta'arafu. So that you may know one another. What do you mean know one another? Know what about them? You know, one thing we've got to remember all of us is that whenever you meet somebody, you should always think that, this is one of the Sufi sayings actually, he is better than me and he will know more than me, and therefore I can learn something from him. So therefore I will listen, whether he's small or big, whether he is poor or rich, it doesn't matter. Okay? Having that, ah, I hope you can see something. This is what the deen is teaching us, openness. What's it teaching us? You know, these are words which are very new, you know. The modern words, openness, transparency. But in the vocabulary of Quran, they're there. It's just that we Muslims haven't still recognized them. The world has recognized them, but we still don't recognize these. You know, there are shelves full of, you know, self-development, which talk about these things. 
but they're in the Quran already. Okay? The Hilful Fadul is there, and this is what really makes Sheikh Abdullah bin Bayya such a you know, wonderful scholar. That he wants to take things that were 1400 years old, make them look, they're relevant today. We need them today. The deen of Allah isn't old, okay? It's just that our thinking has become old. We are sunk, and we are the ones you know, who live in the time warp. Our deen actually takes us out of that. That is the beauty of the deen. The Quran is timeless. Yes, it's timely. It needs, it's fit for our time, but it is timeless. It doesn't depend on a particular time. It is relevant for all times. So this is what's really amazing about this charter and what makes it fantastic. You know, and the final talk was by a very important person. He was, he's the Under Secretary General of the United Nations, Adam, he's a Muslim. And I was sitting, I was sitting next to Hamza Yusuf, and he was giving this talk, uh, 35 minutes. Uh, Adam, the Under Secretary of UN, very important person, okay? He represents the, uh, the General Secretary of the United Nations. And you know what he was doing? You know, he was talking about how wonderful the Charter of Tolerances, how wonderful, and, and it's, it's got nine very important points in it about how we understand others, how we relate with others, how we respect others, how we show compassion to others, how we forgive others, just like those three wonderful people had done in real life, okay? He was trying to give that, look, this is fantastic, you know, and he was quoting this verse again and again. And I said to Hamza Yusuf, I, 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 do you notice something? Isn't he fulfilling what the Quran says? From the platform of United Nations, he's saying whatever Muhammad Rasulullah said, whatever the Quran tells us about human relationships and the science of human relationships is indeed very relevant. It is what we need today. And I said, this is the meaning of this verse. He sent his messenger so that the deen would overwhelm all others and everybody will accept this. So today, nobody denies these values. Are you with me? That's what I'm, I want to prove to you that these are values that are real values, living values. And they are relevant at every stage. My personal life to the to the level of not just a nation, but even the United Nations. The whole globe needs these beautiful teachings of tolerance and of living together. So inshallah, you know, uh, although you know, we're talking about um, a big thing when we talk about that all the nations should really follow this um, idea of acceptance of the other, okay? So we don't feel superior to others. We don't regard others as inferior. Therefore, we don't dehumanize them. You know, we only attack other people after they are dehumanized and shown to be not like us, not human beings, okay? Otherwise, a human being cannot harm and hurt someone who is a human being. First, you have to dehumanize them, show that they are not really human beings, okay? Call them names. And this is what's mentioned earlier on in Surah Al-Hujrat, where Allah says, don't, you know, don't do this, okay? Uh, <laughs> don't, be, don't be suspicious about people. Don't look down on them, okay? And don't, tell, don't look at their evils or their wrongs and constantly talk about them. Rather, look at the positive sides. You know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all to appreciate, you know, the, the greatness of the deen of Allah, and to begin to really realize that what we have is huge gems. We have pearls of wisdom here from Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi and from the divine, from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. It is for us to discover, it is for us to actually live by them. And you know, this verse is a very, very powerful verse, really. Uh, who else can enunciate great principles and truths like this other than the Quran? You know, the Quran is saying, Allah is talking, you know, I made you all alike. So what is it that makes you feel I'm better than the other? Okay. <laughs> Inna akramakum, in the Allahi atqaakum. It doesn't say the best amongst you. Allah says, the 
Mukram, the Mukram, the one who is respectable in my sight. Okay, and that is what really matters at the end of the day. How does Allah look at you? Okay, the one who is respected and, 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 and given honor by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is true honor. What else? Okay, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all to appreciate and become people who are really tolerant. So anybody who wants to learn more about this charter of, uh, of, of um, uh, the alliance of the uh, virtue, you know, and inviting other people to take part in this, uh, you know, you can read, go, go onto the website or read my article, Thought for Friday, which I sent out today. And inshallah, you'll learn more about it. And you know, this is the other thing, you know, when you find something wonderful, learn about it, you know, understand it. You know, I know most of you are on social media and you're always sharing all kinds of weird and wonderful things, okay? Uh, all sorts of weird and wonderful things. Uh, and, and sometimes try to learn things that are really important for the Muslims and for the honor of, uh, of our deen as well.